Hello YouTubers, welcome to or welcome back to the channel. Charles here with Hellcat Entertainment bringing you another informative video. Last week we talked about photographer red flags and what models need to look out for when vetting their photographers. Well, as I discussed last week, today I'm gonna to be talking to you about model red flags and this is what photographers should be looking out for when vetting the models. Now, once again, for those who are just tuning in and may not have seen the previous video, you may want to check out that video and take a look at it. Uh, I've been shooting photography for about 15 plus years, almost 16 years now, so I've definitely seen a lot of things, dealt with a lot of people, heard a lot of stories and things like that. So this here is gonna be specifically talking about red flags with models and things that models are capable of doing or not doing and ways of photographers taking a look and having some useful information so that way when they dive into this field, they're gonna be able to know what to look for, what not to look for and who to work with, who not to work with and different things like that. I will be honest when I do say that there are definitely a lot more red flags with photographers as opposed to red flags with models. This is an uh, industry geared to a lot of male photographers looking at um, getting into shooting women and things like that. That's majority of what I see. However, obviously there's men shooting men, women shooting women, women shooting men. I mean, a whole plethora does occur. However, just with my experience and the people that I've dealt with and who's in my circle, I do just see majority of it being male photographers working with female models. So with that being said, yes, models, unfortunately, you all aren't perfect either. So I'm gonna dive right in and let's go ahead and start with red flag number one. And this one should be utmost importance to all photographers out there. And that is before vetting your model or during vetting your model, make sure you do an age check. If you're not sure if the model is over 18 or in some countries, the model is not over 21. Now, just because a model is underage, that doesn't mean you can't shoot her. You definitely just can't shoot her nude and you can't shoot her in provocative lingerie and things like that. So if you're not a glamour photographer, an erotic art photographer, um, and you're doing just uh, swimsuit photos or you're doing fashion photos, yes, you can definitely shoot underage models. However, before working with that model, you do need to have written consent by their parent or guardian. So keep that in mind. I personally don't work with anybody under 18. I refuse not to work with anybody under the age of 18. And it's very rare that I actually work with people under the age of 21. Uh, so also definitely check in with your countries and your country's laws to see that if you are doing erotic art or nude photos, um, if the laws in your country are 18 or 21 and just be sure that when you're talking to these models that they should be able to show some sort of proof of how old they are. If these models do not want to show you proof of how old they are, if it's very questionable and you're not sure if they're over the age of 18 or 21, then that could be a red flag in its own. Now I do understand privacy and things like that. Showing you an ID will definitely give you possibly their home address. So for the models, it's not a red flag if a photographer is asking you for this information, but as a model to protect yourself, just show them a picture of your ID and cover up your address if you don't want them knowing your address or if you don't want them to know your specific driver's license number or ID number. I could, I could totally understand that, especially when you guys are new working with each other. However, it is not wrong for a photographer to want to be able to know that you are of the legal age to be able to work with you. Red flag number two. This is one of the ones that I've encountered myself multiple times. Kind of find it a little funny that models out there do this type of thing, but I'm gonna call this one bait and switch. And that basically is, is I've had models come up into my DMs and say, oh my gosh, I really love your work. I would really like to work with you. Can we work something out and can we shoot together? And I'll be like, looking at them, I'll you know definitely do my diligence, look at their portfolio, see that they've done modeling before, or haven't done modeling, you know, and kind of make a decision from there if I wanna work with them. But moving forward, talking about a concept, talking about a date, you could be chatting with this model for maybe a week or two, depending on how long it takes to dial everything in. And right before it gets to the point of actually showing up on set or things like that, or actually doing the physical work, the model will then be like, oh, by the way, my rates are X amount of dollars per hour or X amount of dollars per shoot. And then I kind of just laugh. I, I can't help but laugh. It's like, why did you as a model come to me saying you love my work and you want to work with me? And then we even took the time to dial in a concept and everything. And then you start throwing down your rates. Now, I'm not sure if that works for other photographers, but for me, that's a huge red flag. Like that's just a no go. Like if you're kind of doing that manipulation up front, like what, what else 
can happen. Like that just it just makes absolute no sense to me. So bait and switch, that's that's a no go. I work in the auto industry as well, so there's no bait and switching going on in that industry. There's no bait and switching going on in this this modeling industry either. So bait and switch, no go, you're cut. The next red flag is gonna be similar to a photographer red flag. And again, this isn't necessarily a red flag, but it's definitely something to keep an eye out for. And that is when approaching a model or if a model approaches you and wants to work with you and you look at their portfolio and you basically see like, wow, it looks like A, you've never modeled before or B, you've modeled before, but it really doesn't look like you've modeled for anything of high quality or you had your best friend just take some photos of you it looks like your first photos of just modeling were shot maybe a month or two ago so again that's not necessarily a red flag but photographers definitely keep that in mind when you're vetting these models that that definitely shows that they are not um, experienced i guess you'd say so if you're a new photographer for a new photographer to work with a new model that could work one of two ways i've seen that where it can work really well where you got a new photographer, a new model, and because both of you have little to no expectations of what you're gonna pump out as far as the end result, that could work very collaborative and creatively where you both are kind of on the same level of energy and you're just kind of testing the waters, playing out different angles, different lighting and stuff like that. And, and I've seen some actual decent results come from that. However, if you're a very experienced photographer and you're trying to work with a brand new model, I mean, you need to understand that the chances are of coming up with some really good 10 out of 10 content, that's, that's gonna be kind of rare. So this next red flag is what I call faking the funk. And when, it, when I say that, I mean, there's a lot of models out there where you could see in their Instagram or whatever portfolio it is, portfolio it is they're trying to show you, they're trying to play it off as if they're very experienced, they got a lot of experience. And when you look through their work, like sure, maybe they have shot with 10 photographers or maybe just one photographer 10 times, but you look through the portfolio and, and the quality of the work just isn't really there. The lighting could be poor, the angles could be poor, facial expressions, like the energy, you just aren't getting that wow factor or that inspirational factor where you're like wow this this model actually does really good work and I'd really love to work with them. So I do get models sometimes coming into my DMs and they're asking me like, hey, I'd really like to work with you. I've been modeling for three to four years. Um, let's, let's work together. And I kind of have to be weary about those because when you're looking at the portfolio, it doesn't quite show, I mean, sure, maybe they have been working and it could be just the fact that maybe they haven't had really good luck of finding a good photographer. So maybe this isn't necessarily a red flag, but definitely something to keep in mind when vetting these models is is if you see that the work quality just isn't there, how do you know or how can they guarantee that they're, they're gonna bring their best game when they come on set? So maybe red flag or not, but I call it kind of faking the funk because the, a lot of the way that some of these models talk when they're trying to talk about that is they try to sound like they've been doing it for a long time. They try to sound like they got a lot of experience, but when you actually look at it, it doesn't necessarily look like it in their portfolio. And maybe to them, they, they are doing their best and whatnot. And some models have it, some models don't. So photographers just keep in mind when they're coming and they're talking a big game, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are that experienced. Always look at the portfolio and the portfolio work should see for itself, but do take into consideration who they've been working with as well, because maybe they haven't had an opportunity to work with higher level photographers that can actually produce higher end results that maybe they're requiring. So you might wanna give them a chance, but you should be able to feel that out pretty quick on set, how well they're actually able to work and how well they're able to bring their best A game and, and their best image. This next red flag I wanna call the greedy me, me, me model. And this may be a model that you as a photographer actually approach because you're looking at their portfolio, you have an idea in your head, or maybe you don't have an idea in your head, but you look at their portfolio and you're like, damn, this model looks really good. They look like they've got a lot of talent and I would really like to work with them. So when you approach them and you message them, they're like, sure, like I will work, these are my rates. And obviously if a model has rates, that's not a red flag on its own, especially if they do show that they have the quality of work. However, it's the next step that comes after that is, okay, you're agreeing to pay for the model. And once you agree to pay for the model, and this is probably another video on its own I should make is who pays who and how, when, why, and everything, because that's always confu confusion on its own. But technically, if I'm paying a model, 
I have all the rights to the images. That's that's the reason why I'm paying for the model is because like I'm paying for your image and I'm paying for you to do a job for me. That doesn't mean that I'm going to hand over all of the images to you. But when I say me, me, me models is A, they want you to pay them, which again, that's fine. But then B, they want all of the images too. And then if you ask them, why do you want all of these images? They're saying, well, so I could use them on my social media platforms. And so I could use them to make money. So I could use them on my OnlyFans or whatever it may be. So I'm like thinking, wow, that, that sounds pretty wild. Like you agreed to work with me, fine. You have a rate, fine. But on top of that, you want all of the photos and you want to be able to use the photos to make more money. So I'm gonna pay you to create professional content for you so that way you can sell them and make more money. I mean, that's just wild. That's almost like me going to McDonald's saying, hey, you know what? You need to pay me to eat your Big Mac. Like that, like, even though I'm the one that's eating it, I'm the one that's getting full, like that makes absolutely no sense to me. And there are definitely plenty of models that like to do this and it's, and it's mind blowing to me. So at that point in time, I don't know, I don't always necessarily cut it off, but I do try to have um, a meaningful conversation with them to try to explain to them like how, how is that even remotely fair? If you're paying for their services, then that's it. They pay, you pay them, they do their job, and then they go home. Like that's, that's pretty much it. And then whatever the discussion was prior to that, whatever agreement you had of why you as the photographer want these images and how you choose to use these images, you make sure you have a contract and you agree on that and everything's signed. However, it's very rare that if I'm paying a model, I'm gonna give them all of the photos too. That just makes no sense. To me, if, if they're getting all the photos too, then that's more of like a trade for time thing or they should be paying me, especially if they want to use the photos later to make money. So if they're wanting to make money with the photos and sell the photos, then yeah, like then you should be paying me for my service because you're gonna utilize them later to make money. So that's what I said, the me, 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 greedy models. And there's some photographers that really don't care about this. I've seen a lot of photographers pay models and give them the photos and that's cool. I'm not saying that you, you can't do that, but it's just, that's kind of a red flag is like me, me, me. So the model is technically all about themselves and they're not necessarily in it for, for the right purposes. They, they may or may not deliver their best game because sure they got paid and then they know they're, it's, it's just, it's, it's really confusing to me when a model has a rate and then on top of the rate, they want the photos too. That just doesn't make sense. Another red flag that happens quite often is the lazy model. Now a lazy model, typically you could tell how active or how lazy they are based on how they respond to you when you're actually engaging in conversation. And you could either message the model or the message or the model messages you. It, it doesn't matter how the conversation starts, but during the conversation, if you're coming up with a concept and you're planning on working together and the model takes, let's say a week to respond to the message. Now I do understand, and you as photographers need to understand that majority of these good looking models definitely have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dudes dropping in their DMs, photographers, thirsty guys, period. So I can totally understand that they're, their message boxes are just, just inundated with all of these messages. However, if you know that you're engaging in conversation with someone and you, you know that there's responses being made, I mean, you, you got to find a way to separate that and find a way to, to prioritize that message so that way you guys could finish um, you know, the collaboration deal. Now, I don't expect models to give me their personal phone number when we're first working together because obviously, you know, that's some models don't want to do give out their personal information and that's totally understandable. I do recommend all models get like a Google voice number or something like that. So that way they could have like a separate line to be able to give that number out because I personally would rather do phone calls or text messages when I'm, when I'm working these deals out as opposed to working within the DMs and Instagram, knowing that especially if they got like 50 K followers, I mean, I can only imagine what their, their inbox looks like. Um, so, it doesn't necessarily mean they're lazy that they're taking a while to get back to you. I could understand that. But if it's taking over a week to get back to you, then you, the priority of them wanting to do this shoot seems like it's not high up there. And if the priority is not high to finish this conversation and to dial in all the details and to select a date and to actually make this happen, then that leads me to believe like, are they just so busy that are they going to flake or not show up or make some excuse or how long is it actually going to take for this process to go through to actually get this model on set. So to me, that, that's, that's a red flag. That's like, why, why is this conversation that should literally take even like a day just to converse or maybe a couple of days because you, you, you 
say, okay, yes, we want to work together. And then the next kind of piece of it is like, okay, well, this is the ideas we have. Let's dial in the ideas. And then, of course, once you select the idea, then the next piece is selecting the date and time to actually do it. So let's just say a three-part conversation should not take a month or so to, to finalize. That, that just seems like a really long time. And if anyone's taken a month to finalize an idea and a concept with you, then that just sounds like they're not really interested. That leads me to the next one. And the next one basically just is a flaky model. So you've had the three part conversation, you've dialed in an idea, you want to work together, you dialed in a date and the day of the day of is usually the worst. If, if a model can tell me the day before or even a couple of days before that, hey, something came up, I need to reschedule. I usually always give models one reschedule. If I've worked with you before, two reschedules, you know, I understand life happens and things happens. But if you had a set date and everything's good to go and then the model cancels the day of, I mean, that's a pain in the butt for the photographer, especially if you rented a studio space or even if you have your own studio space and you set everything up, you got the props ready you got the lighting ready you got the camera everything set up for this model to show up and crickets you know um so there's there's the models that flake and there's the the ghosting models where some will flake with an actual real world excuse and some will flake and just not even say a word and that to me is the worst so if you're going to blatantly just disrespect me and my time by not even letting me know that you can't make it then that's just instant red flag like you're you're cut like i don't want to work with you anymore because i don't have the time for that i set aside the time and day to create with you and you decided just to disappear i mean for a photographer depending on how and where and what you're shooting a photographer's setup can take a couple hours to set everything up for you so as a model please due diligence if you're going to reschedule try to reschedule at least a day or two before i do understand emergencies happen things happen monthly cycles happen i totally understand that so the more leeway that you give the photographer the better but if you're going to flake the day of and especially flake the day of and not even say a word, then that's just blatant disrespect. And that's a huge red flag. Now, when you reschedule the second time again, life happens. Totally understand that you better have a really good excuse the second time as to why you why you couldn't show up. And a lot of times I hear things like, oh, I just didn't have gas or, oh, uh, like my boyfriend decided that he wanted to surprise me with something, even though I don't know how many of those are true. I've, I'm, I'm almost 40 years old now. I've, I've heard a lot of excuses with models and I've also heard a lot of excuses in the whole job world. So I've kind of heard it all and no majority of these excuses aren't necessarily always real. So definite red flag if the model just seems to constantly be flaking. You don't want to work with someone that wants to be flaking like that because that's, that's going to drive you mad as a photographer if you continuously try to support this habit and how are they going to deliver? And if they're constantly flaking on you, if you do finally land a date that the planets align and everything and you get them on set, are they really going to bring their best A game? Because if they're making up excuses to, to change a day or they're prioritizing other things over the shoot, then how are they going to act when they're on set as well is, is my question. Are they, are they going to bring their best A game or are they just going to kind of half-ass it just to kind of get by, get it done, knock it out and, and on to the next thing. So huge red flag, flaky models. I really would not tolerate models that need to reschedule more than once or possibly twice, depending if I've worked with you before and I know you're a great model and, and, and life just isn't quite working out right now for you, then I, I could have more um, leniency for that. But if it's a brand new model, like you, you better try to show up and you better bring your best A game. So one more red flag that I have here corresponds a little bit with my previous video as well with photographer red flags and it goes both ways and that is substance. So as I mentioned in the previous video, me as a photographer, I am never going to try to get a model drunk. I'm never going to try to get a model high. Uh, I do photograph and do video for weed companies and, and weed videos. So if it's a specific weed video, then that's a whole different ball game. That kind of is, is different. Obviously, I did the boobies and doobies with Burning Rose. So you'll see that video where, yeah, she's just smoking nonstop blunts. But that's a different aspect because that is actually what we're creating and other than that like a photographer shouldn't ask a model to drink and a model shouldn't really ask a photographer to drink that goes both ways i 
Also mentioned that as models, if a model wants to have a drink on their own because they want to loosen up and just have like one drink before they even show up or one drink right when they're on set, like that they brought themselves, then that's a different story too. We're adults here. We, we, can, we can do things like that. However, as a photographer, I am not going to tolerate a model coming to a set where it's not a stoner set and they're just wanting to get high before the set or wanting to get high during the set or the model decides to bring some like i mentioned the other video i had two models that brought a freaking bottle of vodka to the set i didn't realize they were already drunk when they showed up they definitely seemed loose and happy and ready to rock and roll but then as soon as they brought out this bottle of vodka that was like already half gone i kind of questioned them and said hey what's going on oh we've been drinking this since this morning and it's just like whoa 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 so i cut that immediately Immediately. like everything starts getting sloppy when you're drunk everything gets sloppy when you're you're high you get the stoner eyes you know it, you just I don't feel that it's going to be your most professional output if you have some sort of substance so a red flag is if a model for whatever reason constantly feels the need that they need to use a substance while on set it just it just doesn't need to be that way most professions out there you don't work under the influence of anything. I don't go to my day job and drink or smoke before I go to work just so I could perform better. And a model should be no different. So if a model is showing up on your set, seeming like they're already drunk or high as a kite that they can't even open their eyes and you're not shooting a, a weed set, then that, that's a huge red flag. And I don't recommend shooting a model if they seem like they're drunk or seem like they're under the influence of anything because all boundaries that you may have set prior to shooting could potentially be skewed in everything. And the model might be willing to do more things, especially if they've been drinking, they might be willing to do more things than they would have normally set because they're loose now with, with like three or four drinks and you're gonna shoot that, you're gonna run along with it as a, as a photographer. You're like, okay, cool, like, well, let's go ahead and do this. And then you end up shooting it and at the end of the day, the model may not know anything at the end of the day because she's still buzzed or drunk or whatever and then go home. But then the model later could have an epiphany like, holy crap, like what, what did I just do? What did I just allow? Like, I, I can't believe I allowed myself to do that and then want to contact you as the photographer and tell you that you need to nix and scrap the set because that's not initially what was discussed. And you as a photographer, unfortunately, you have to nix the set at that point in time because if a model's telling you that you can't publish this or you can't do anything with this because you guys didn't originally have those boundaries set, but you decided to just run along with it, the, the model has control there and you're not going to be able to post any of that content if you do. There better be some sort of legal contract that you guys signed. Uh, if there's no legal contract that you guys signed, then again, the model has the control. So I don't tolerate that at all because I don't want to go through putting in all this work and all this effort for a model to just shut down the whole scene the next day or, or a week later because they had an epiphany realizing that they were, you know, mind their mind was elsewhere because they were on some sort of substance. So substances just aren't tolerated. I, I don't recommend shooting models that are on substances or bringing substances. It's just a red flag. If a model says like, hey, we're going to have some fun. Let's 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 have this bottle of tequila or let's do some shots together and stuff like that. It's like absolutely not. This next one brings me to basically the model that wants everything. And when I say everything, I mean, they want the raw photos, too. Now, if the model is coming to you and the model is paying you as a photographer and you have an original agreement that they want the raw photos and you are a photographer that's okay with that and you're getting paid for it so you can agree to that, then totally understand. Hand over the raw photos, give the model the raw photos and let them do it as they wish because again, they, as the model, are paying you, the photographer, for a service. However, if you're doing a trade shoot and things like that and things aren't discussed and after you get done shooting, the model decides, you know, I want all the raw images too because I didn't like the way you edited the photos and I want to edit them myself. Well, time out, red flag because in a trade shoot, I am never going to provide any model with the raw images and I don't ever see the reason why the model should be editing their own photos on their own anyways. You guys saw each other's work and you saw how one works and how one edits and things like that. So the model should have already had a kind of a heads up as to how your editing style is or what your photography style is. And if they agreed to work with you, then they agreed to work with you. Um, there have been times, you know, once or twice in my career that I've edited some photos and a model just kind of was like, no, I, I, I didn't, didn't really like the way you edited these. And they might point out um, the way that you edited a different set and see that it is a different style. 
then I could be like, okay, you know, give me some time and, and let me let me brush it up. Uh, I don't know if I'll edit the whole set at that point. I'll probably tell the model, hey, show me your 10 favorites or something, and then I could re-edit them that way. But I'm never going to give the photos to the model to re-edit. You, the photographer, are essentially the artist and have usually the vision of how you want to edit, how you want to shoot, how you want to light, and everything like that. The model is just the subject that you're, that you're shooting. So for me to want to give that up and to want to let the models edit, that just... It seems a little bizarre to me, so I, I don't really allow that. It actually kind of irks me a little bit if I send all these images to a model and then later I find out that the model just either photoshopped them themselves and sometimes they get photoshopped to bloody hell. It just looks like trash to me because it's just over edited or they say they gave it to a friend or something so that way they could edit them. And it's just like, whoa, 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 time out. Like, why are you even doing that? There should be no one else involved in the work unless you, again, are getting paid for your services or you agreed that before, like, hey, you're not an editor and you want to allow them to edit it, or sometimes there are photographers that get so backed up in the editing process that they actually hire third-party retouchers to retouch the work for them. So that's a possibility too. But if the photographer's hiring a retoucher to retouch the work, then obviously the photographer is paying some money to get the retouches done. That should be worked out in the contract some way, shape, or form. And once they get back to the model to see those get edited too, then it's like, wow, the photographer just seems like he wasted his money then on this retoucher when the model went and just sent these photos to somewhere else and edited them to, to bloody hell. Now, I do think it's cute and kind of flattering when sometimes I do have these uh, artist people that either paint or it's some sort of other art medium. It's usually like painting or sketching and they'll you know hit me up in the in the direct message and say, hey, I really like this photo. Do you mind if I redraw it or I, or I paint it? You know, um, some of the models get asked that all the times too. And I, I'm, I'm totally cool with that. I, I would rather that happen than someone just take my photos and just re-edit my photos for, for whatever reason they decide to. So if I see that going on, that's a red flag to me and it kind of makes me not want to work with that model anymore. It's like, okay, so I, I can't, I basically didn't do my job right the first time. So they're now wanting to take the images and do with what they want. And that just doesn't make sense to me. So if that's the case and they want to work with me again, then I'm just like, why do you even want to work with me again when apparently whatever I delivered wasn't good enough for you that you had to modify it again? That just doesn't make any sense. So models that want to do that, to me, it's a red flag. And, and I usually kind of cut ties with those at that point in time. So this last red flag, I think it should be the last red flag, is what I call a Photoshop model. Now, I haven't really seen this happen too much anymore. It used to be, I'd say 10 years ago, this would happen a lot more frequently than it does now. I think that's just because people are open to more body types than they were before, and people are definitely a lot more to imperfections as they were than before, because what would happen would be you would have a, a model and you look at their portfolio and everything in their portfolio just looks heavily Photoshopped, skin smooth, um, body mods, different things like that. You know, they'd actually make thicker girls skinny and, and just, just you could kind of just tell the way the lines are going that things aren't what they appear. So I call these Photoshop models because they, they feel like they need to have this image of themselves that isn't necessarily actually real. And if I'm looking through a portfolio and I'm seeing this beautiful work, but it looks like it's heavily modified, me as a photographer, I may ask the model, hey, I don't see any actual selfies of you in here. I don't see any actual like cell phone photos or amateur photos or anything like that taken of you. So I'm curious, can you please send me a photo of you? And I'm not asking for a naked photo or anything like that, but just a photo of themselves. So I could see what they actually really look like and I know what I'm getting myself into before working with them because if their perception and conception is that you're going to photograph them and spend the oodles of hours to modify their body in a way that makes them almost look like a perfect Barbie doll, then that's a red flag for me. Like I, I don't have time for that. I don't want to do that. I don't like photoshopping body mods. I may soften the skin just to pinch, just to make the photo look more like a soft portrait, but I'm not going to sit there and remove hardcore blemishes. I'm not going to sit there and do tummy tucks and Photoshop. I'm not going to sit there and add muscles. I'm not going to sit there and change a jawline. I'm not going to sit there and like add nails or do all these 
wild things that I've seen done. And again, this is more so in the past it was done, but I still have seen it from time to time. And especially with AI and things like that, I've seen a lot of people who are creating this image of themselves that isn't exactly themselves. So these Photoshop models are, are a huge, huge red flag. Unless you as a photographer, you, you really want to work with anybody, you have all the time in the world to spend to make sure that you don't ruin their image because heaven forbid you take a photo of that person and you don't do the same body mods that are on the rest of their portfolio and you have an image that now stands out and calls them out for who they really are, that that's just not gonna work for them. It's probably gonna upset them and they're probably gonna want you to spend all that time because if a model comes to you and talks to you and basically says like, oh, you're good at Photoshop, right? Or you could Photoshop me, right? Then it's like, whoa, time out. Like, why do I need to Photoshop you? Like, what do you, what do you want Photoshopped? What, what are you looking for? Are you, are you trying to be exactly like all these other images in your portfolio? Then like, please send me a picture of you. And, and you'd be surprised 10 years ago, there'd be some times that I would ask for these photos of these models and they would send me this photo. And I'm just like, wow, like, oh, okay. And I'm not saying that the person isn't beautiful, but it's just like a wow that you look nothing like these photos and you are now creating this, this false front, this, this, this image of yourself. And maybe it's how you want to see yourself. I, I don't know. Um, but that definitely is out there. It's like I said, a bit more rare <laughs> than it used to be. But definitely keep an eye out for that. Always check the portfolio, see what their work looks like. And you could tell when body mods have been done because when you look around the edges of the model's body, whether it be arms, legs, stomach, butt, whatever, you, you could see if the background itself has been skewed around it. Like it, it looks like it's just got clicked and, and drugged. So I've seen people make bigger booties, bigger boobies, tighter tummies, put muscles, uh, accentuate the jawline and things like that. I mean, if you want to accentuate your jawline, there's there's makeup that should be able to do that. So I don't know, to me, that's it's wild. It, it, it's out there, it's a real thing. Uh, models, if that's you, I'm not trying to call you out. You, you should just be happy and beautiful with who you are as you are because every human is beautiful in their own way, shape, or form, no matter what body type, body color, size, and anything. Like it's just, we're all human, we're all beautiful. Humans are beautiful. So. That's all I'm going to leave with that is like, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not the type that's going to, that's going to body mod you. So if any model for me wants body mods via Photoshop, to me, that's a red flag. I don't have time for that. I, I don't think people should even be requesting that. Like, why, let, let's keep it real. Let's, let's keep this stuff 100. All right, so that pretty much wraps up this video. Photographers, I hope this is a lot of useful information with you, uh, for you. It is kind of common sense, a lot of these items, and it does kind of coexist with the whole uh, photographer red flags. A lot of them kind of overlapped a little bit. However, two different types of jobs, <laughs> job descriptions, I guess you'd say. So definitely two different types of red flags. And it's just, just do your diligence. So I'll leave you photographers with this once again, is just make sure you do your vetting as the models will vet you as photographers. So when you do see a model, they should hopefully be tagging some of the photographers that they work with. And that way you could message the photographers and ask them, hey, like, is this a good model to work with? How was she? You know, what type of energy do they bring? Are they lazy? Did they flake on you? Now, unfortunately, Photographers are a bit different than models, and it's a kind of a sad thing to admit here. And I'm not this way, but, but I've had this experience, whereas models, if a model is vetting another photographer and asking models about photographers, the other models have no problem you know, calling a photographer out or praising a photographer that worked good. However, photographers, for whatever reason, and, and I really hope wish this would stop even though it doesn't, but they they kind of like guard their models in regards to not wanting anyone else to work with them. They guard their they guard their locations, they guard everything as if no one else can use it. So there's been times that I've actually asked a couple photographers <coughs> about a certain model and either I'll get no response, it'll be red, I'll be left on red, or they kind of just be like, oh, well, just see for yourself or things like that. So that uh, that's pretty sad. Uh, any photographer that wants to vet any of the models that I've worked with, I have no problem sharing the information. 
I firmly believe that you could have three photographers in the same room with the same model, with the same setup. And if you are three independent artists, you should be able to come up with three different style shots, whether the style changes in the editing or the style changes in the just the angles and things like that. And I don't necessarily mean them shooting identically at the same time, but if there's one model and they, they switch, switch it on, let's say like 15 minute sets, then they, they, you should be able to come up with something different. It, 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 it's, it's an art, it's a vision, and everybody sees things differently. Everybody sees different angles. And it's just a shame to see how a lot of photographers kind of safeguard everything as if, as if it, another photographer is a threat to them. And it's just, it, it shouldn't be that way. Information should be shared. If photographers would better just be open to it, I think it'd be a, a better industry in, to a degree, but that's a whole nother ball game as well. But do your diligence as a photographer. If you're looking at a new model and you wanna work with a model you've never worked with before and you're kind of curious as to how she works, then definitely just message some of the other photographers that she's worked with. If she's worked with some other models, you might be able to message the models and get some information out of them. I'm not sure how well that will work, but the bottom line is for sure, at least look at their portfolio, see how long they've been doing it, see what kind of shots they're coming up with, see what angles work, make sure everything's not heavily photoshopped. If you start engaging in a conver conversation, hopefully they're gonna be receptive, respective of your time and everything. and. You know, just just do diligence, you know, make sure everything's laid out. You guys are going to lay out a time, a concept, a date, where you're going to do it, how you're going to do it. Make sure that you guys discuss the contract in regards to how many images are expected to be taken, who's paying who, how long the set's going to take. Just 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 do all that. And as long as the model shows up on time, the model shows up sober or yeah, sober, like <laughs> everything should be great. But like, again, there are models that do break these little rules just like there are photographers that break the rules but if you do your diligence you do your vetting everything should be great and that's pretty much going to wrap up this video for you guys if you think it was very informative please hit that like button down below subscribe to the channel and i'm going to keep producing some new content for you guys peace